To set up a game of Western Legends, first, place the game board in the center of the table, place the money, separated in denominations of $10 and $20 bills, in their designated spots, place the 52 poker card deck on the board in its designated spot in the lower right-hand corner. In the upper left-hand corner of the board, place the 13 card NPC fight deck. Then take the NPC Sheriff miniature and place him in the Sheriff's office in Dark Rock. Place the two decks of story cards in their designated spots, making sure that the condition side of the card is face up. Place the cattle tokens in their designated spots for the ranch at Macedo's Point, as well as the ranch in Sunny Hills. Then place the gold nuggets and prospecting dice in the upper right hand corner of the board so they may be available to all players throughout gameplay. Each player will then draw two character cards, select one, which will represent the character they will play as through the duration of the game, and discard the other card. In this case, we'll have this player select to be Billy the Kid. After selecting a character, players will place the character on their mat in the designated character card slot, and they will take, they will select a miniature and snap the player ring that matches their player mat color onto that miniature. Players will also take four cubes of their designated player color. In Billy's case, he'll be black, and they will have a wound marker, which will represent wounds that they take during fights over the course of the game. That wound marker will be set on the zero space on the wound track. Flipping the character card over, you will find some important information as to where you will start and what items you will begin the game with. The top of the picture, you see a starting location. In Billy the Kid's case, he starts at either Bandit Camp A, either Bandit A hideout. There are two on the board. He gets to select which one he would like to begin. He also has a starting bonus, and every player will as well. In Billy's case, he starts the game with two poker cards, one revolver, and two wanted points, but he does not gain rewards for those wanted points. So players will take their starting items and place their miniature in their starting location on the board. Billy will collect a revolver, two poker cards, and he also begins the game with two wanted points. So he'll place one of his four black cubes that he has onto the wanted track in space number two. After collecting their starting items, whether that's poker cards, money, weapons, items, whatever the case may be, according to their player card, players will place all of their colored cubes to the left-hand side of the board, close to the wanted tracks, and more, more importantly, to the story cards on the board so that they can keep track of what story cards they are contributing to. One cube of each player, of each color, will be placed on the zero spot of the legendary point track at the top of the board. This is where players will keep track of their point totals as the game progresses. And in the case of Billy the Kid, as we saw earlier, he starts with two wanted points. So we've placed one of his black cubes on the number two space on the wanted track to indicate that he is a wanted player. The first player goes to the most wanted player. In this case, Billy the Kid is the most wanted player. So he will begin the game uh, as the first player. Now the first player marker will not rotate as the game goes on. He will be the first player for the entirety of the game. Also to the left-hand side of the board, or any place on the table that is convenient, place your general store stand along with all of the items that are available for purchase to the players. In this case, we have divided out the weapons, the two mounts that are available, some $10 items, and some $20 items to make them easy to find. Feel free to arrange your general store stand however you see fit. Once players have selected their characters and placed their miniatures at the starting location, in this case we have four characters. We have Billy the Kid starting at a bandit hideout. We have Crazy Horse starting at the Cliff Junction Mine. We have Calamity Jane who's starting in the Red Falls General Store. And we have Doc Holliday who is beginning his game at the Red Falls Doctor's Office. Once those miniatures are placed on the board, the next step is to populate the world with NPC bandit miniatures. On the board, there are six bandit camps. Those bandit camps will be populated by miniatures at the start of the game. Every single bandit camp will have a bandit unless a player miniature is standing on that location. So for example, the bandit camp C, there's no one there. So we'll simply place one of the NPC bandits at that location, as well as bandit camp C in Cliff Junction, We'll have a bandit in Camp B at Dixon Creek, a, bamp, uh, a bandit up in Camp B at Sunny Hills, a bandit 
in Camp A, way over near the ranch in Sunny Hills. And there's another bandit camp here in Macedo's Point. However, Billy the Kid is beginning his game there. Since there's a character mini on there, our sixth bandit mini will simply start the game off the board. Taking a closer look at the character cards in Western Legends, first of all, we talked about the back of the card that indicates where the players start their game, as well as the items and money and weapons that they will begin the game with, so their starting bonus. There is also a paragraph of historical information about the character that tells a little bit about their history in the American Wild West. Looking at the front of the character card, we have your character art, and character name, as well as a legendary ability down under the picture. Legendary abilities are unlocked once a player reaches five legendary points, or LP, on the top track up here at the top of the board. Once they reach the fifth space, denoted by the star on the board, they unlock their character's unique ability. In Billy the Kid's case, uh, after he ends his move in a space with one or more players, a player of his choice in that space must give him a poker card or $10, so he effectively robs the player that he shares a space with. That ability will be unlocked the remainder of the game and will not be lost even if something causes this player to fall back below five legendary points. One way a player can earn legendary points is to break the law and climb the wanted track. The wanted track allows players who are notorious criminals, whether they're robbing the bank, they're robbing other players, they're rustling cattle from one ranch to another, they become more notorious in the eyes of the law, become more wanted. As that happens, they simply move, every time they gain a, gain a wanted point, they simply move their colored cube up the wanted track. And multiple players can be wanted, or even all players can be wanted, throughout the course of the game. At the end of every single turn that a wanted player takes, so in the case of Billy the Kid, who is our black player, at the end of every single one of Billy the Kid's turns, that player is going to earn LP equal to the row of where his colored cube is, or basically the more wanted he is, the more legendary points, or the more LP he or she will earn. In Billy the Kid's case, at the end of his turn, he will earn two LP. So we'd simply move his black score marker up the track two spaces to indicate this. The same holds true if, if this were the state of the wanted track at the end of each player's turn. Our blue player, Doc Holliday, would earn one LP. Our yellow player, who's Crazy Horse, will earn one LP at the end of his turn. And Calamity Jane would earn two LP at the end of her turn. At the end of the game, the most wanted player will earn three more legendary points, or LP, and every other wanted player will earn one LP. Players can also earn LP by climbing the Marshall Track and upholding the law. The Marshall Track works a little bit differently than the Wanted Track in that players are not, Marshall players are not earning LP at the end of every single one of their turns as the Wanted players do. When a player enters the Marshall Track, so for example we have Doc Holliday as our blue player, let's say he earns a Marshall point. He places his blue cube on space number one of the Marshall Track and he earns the reward in that square, in this case $20. So it gives him some money so that he can then go buy mounts, upgraded weapons, those kinds of things. As he gains more wanted points, he simply climbs the track. So he would earn another $20 in space number two, and if he moves up to space number three, he immediately earns two LP. The LP listed out here is LP that will be earned at the end of the game based on where that particular player finishes the game on the Marshall track. Players between the Marshall track and the wanted track Players have the ability to go from the Marshall track to the wanted track simply by making a decision. So a Marshall player who maybe they're on the sixth spot down here, Doc Holliday suddenly decides he wants to go on the side of uh, being an outlaw. He goes over and he robs the bank. He simply takes his cube off of the Marshall track, places it on space one of the wanted track, and begins his career as an outlaw. Players cannot exist on the wanted and Marshall track at the same time. And once on the wanted track, you cannot move to the Marshall track until you, until after you are arrested by the NPC sheriff or a Marshall player. It's simply not enough to just say you're sorry in the Wild West. At the start of the game, the players will determine how long of a game they wish to play. An average game plays until someone meets or exceeds 20 legendary points or 20 LP. A short game plays to 15 points and a longer game can be played to 25 or even to 30 if you want an extra long game. A player's turn consists of three phases. A start of turn phase, an action phase where they will take three actions, and an end of turn phase. During the start of turn phase, 
A player will check for any start of turn effects that may be granted by special abilities that have been unlocked, any items they may have, or any uh, additional game conditions that may have start of end effects. Then they will choose to start their turn by drawing $20, two poker cards, or one poker card and $10 to start their turn. They will also select a weapon to use during their turn. During the action phase of their turn, a player will select three actions. One option is to move. A player without a mount can move two spaces in any direction as long as those spaces are adjacent. And so they're able to move in any direction. So that can be one action. You can take these actions multiple times per turn. For the most part, there are a few exceptions. Movement, however, you could use all three actions to simply move. In the case of a player who does not have a mount, you could move six spaces using all three of your actions. So if Crazy Horse here wanted to take a move action, he has no mount, he's at the start of the game, he could simply move his miniature two spaces in any direction. Maybe he wants to move this direction to come over toward this bandit, completely at his discretion. Another option for a player on their turn is to take one of the various location actions available on the board. To do so, they must be located at that particular location and have available actions to use. Let's take a look at various locations where you can take actions in the town of Dark Rock. The town of Dark Rock has a saloon, a bank, and a general store, as well as the sheriff's office where the sheriff begins the game. To take an action at the bank, you need to be in the bank space. If you're taking actions at a saloon, you would need to be in one of the three spaces that are adjacent to the saloon icon. And the same holds true for the general store. The general store has an icon that's located on a vertice between three spaces. You would need to be on one of those three spaces in order to take a general store action. At the saloon, you can play poker. Playing poker, you throw $10 into the pot. It's kind of your ante. You draw a poker card. Anyone else in town can also pay $10 and draw a poker card to play poker against you. Otherwise, you play against the house. The house throws in $50 to the pot, and the winning poker hand wins the pot and all antes. And if they are the active player, they gain one LP. If you lose a game of poker, you draw a poker card. That's kind of a consolation prize. At the bank, you have the option to deposit gold nuggets that you have mined at any of the mines on the board. Those gold nuggets, for every gold nugget that gets deposited in the bank, you earn $20 and one LP for each nugget. You also have the option of attempting to rob the bank or, or committing a heist. When you attempt a heist, you gain one wanted point immediately. If you successfully rob the bank by defeating the NPC guard that resides there, you will gain two additional wanted points as well as $80 to add to your bank. In the general store location, this is where you will purchase or upgrade items. You can take, you can purchase any number of items, mounts, weapons, any combination for one single purchase action. So you, you don't have to take multiple actions. If you want to buy three items, you do not have to take three separate purchase actions. One purchase action would allow you to buy all three items that you wish to purchase. You will also see, just on the outskirts of Dark Rock, there is a mine denoted by this pickaxe icon. That is where you would go to mine for gold. When mining for gold, you simply roll the two prospecting dice that we placed at the start of the game, and you take the result. What you're seeing here are gold nuggets. One side of the die gives you $10, so finding some gold dust. There is a side of the die that is nothing, so you found some gravel. And then there is also a side of the die that gives you $10, as well as letting you re-roll that one die. So it's kind of an exploding die effect. So for one action, you can take a mining action, roll the dice one time, take the results. You can take that mining action multiple times. In the town of Red Falls, you'll notice there is no bank space. However, Red Falls does have a couple of spaces that are unique to it that are not located in Dark Rock. Dark Rock contains the bank as well as the sheriff's office. Both towns have a general store and a saloon where you can purchase items and or play poker. Red Falls also has a cabaret. At the cabaret, you can revel. And what, that, what you do there, you go to the cabaret and you spend money to throw, essentially throw an epic party. For every $30 you spend at the cabaret, you gain one LP. The space here where Doc Holliday started is the Red Falls doctor's office where you can heal. 
for one of your actions. You spend $10, you lose all of your wounds, and you draw one poker card for every wound that you heal. So it's a great way to build your poker hand back up. On the outskirts of Dark Rock and Red Falls, you'll notice ranch spaces. We have a Macedo's Point Ranch located here, and a ranch in Sunny Hills that is located here. For one of your actions, you can acquire a cattle token, simply meaning you take a cattle token off the stack of tokens that is available, you place it on your player mat. You then have two options as to what to do with that cattle token. You can either take the cattle from the Macedo's Point Ranch over to the Sunny Hills Ranch and discard it, rustling that cattle, selling it to a rival rancher, gaining you one wanted point, as well as the reward on the back of the cattle token, which is unknown until you actually rustle that cattle. The other option that you have, if you don't want to gain a wanted point, you want to continue your trek on the Marshall track, is you can take cattle from either ranch, Macedo's Point or Sunny Hills, and you can wrangle the cattle down here to the rail station and sell it legally. When you do so, you gain the reward on the back of the cattle token, as well as one Marshall Point. Another action that can be taken is players can choose to play poker cards from their hand and use the action printed on the card. In Western Legends, all of the poker cards have obviously a poker value, so in this case we have the Ace of Spades, but there's also an action, in some cases a reaction or a bonus that can be played at various times throughout the game. Anytime a card says action, as this Living Legend Ace does, it means I can use one of my actions during my turn to simply play this card and activate the card's ability. So I would play this ace down, and in this case I would gain one marshal or wanted point. If Billy the Kid played this card, he would probably want to gain a wanted point and climb up the track one more space. Various cards will be played at different times throughout the game. Some are reactions that can be played when you move. Some are bonuses that can be played also when you move, or bonuses that can be played during a game of poker. Those types of cards will have instructions printed on them. At any time, if a card bends or breaks a rule from the rulebook, the card takes precedent. Players can end up fighting bandits, an NPC guard, or the NPC sheriff based on things that happen in the game. In this case, Billy takes a move action and moves into the space occupied by a bandit. This immediately triggers a fight, in which case the player to Billy's right would draw two cards from the NPC fight deck and would take on the role of the bandit in the fight. The NPC fight cards, Billy's going to play poker cards from his hand and it's simply a high card wins in the matter of a fight. So in the case of this bandit fight, the player to Billy's right has drawn two NPC poker cards, a six and an ace. These cards do not have suits on them, they're strictly used for their values. You'll also notice that on the ace, it says the other player in this fight gains one LP, one martial point, or one wanted point. If I flip over to the six, the other player in this fight gains one wound, and this cannot be canceled. As the player who is playing the bandit in this fight, I would select one of these two cards to attack Billy with. So I have a decision to make. Do I play the ace and let the bandit win the fight? Or do I play the six where there's a possibility that Billy will win the fight, but give Billy a wound that he cannot cancel? I simply play that six for the bandit. Billy then plays a card from his hand. Let's say he plays the Ace of Clubs, the Living Legend. In this case, Billy would win the fight. By winning a fight, he gets to gain either a martial point or a legendary point. It's his choice. As a wanted player, he'll probably take the legendary point, or he has to take the legendary point. So he moves up the legendary point track one space. Win or lose in a fight, the bandit is removed from the board and will only be spawned and returned to the board through story cards as they get triggered. Wanted players could also end up fighting the NPC Sheriff character. Story cards and a certain poker card allow players to move the Sheriff a set number of spaces as designated by the card that is played. When the Sheriff moves into the space occupied by a wanted player, in this case he's moved into Billy's space, the player must first discard a card. So Billy has to discard a card out of his hand immediately. 
The player to Billy's right will draw four cards from the NPC fight deck, as opposed to the two they would draw for a bandit. They're now drawing four because the sheriff is a lot stronger. And the fight proceeds exactly the same, with the player to Billy's right selecting one of the fight cards for its value or its ability, completely their choice. If the sheriff wins the battle, Billy, in this case, would be arrested. He would lose half of his money, half his gold nuggets, any cattle tokens he may possess, all of his wanted points, so he's now reset on the wanted track, and he and the sheriff are moved back to the sheriff's office. If Billy were to win this fight against the sheriff, he does not gain any rewards other than the fact that he remains wanted. He doesn't lose his money, he doesn't lose wanted points, he doesn't lose cattle tokens. Regardless of the outcome of the fight, the sheriff returns to the sheriff's office. The other type of NPC fight that can happen is at the bank. If Billy were to move into the bank space and declare he was going to attempt to rob the bank, he must first successfully defeat the guard at the bank. The player to Billy's right will draw three of the NPC fight cards and choose one to play. Again, for the value or its effect, it's up to that player. If Billy wins, he gains $80 and three wanted points. If he happens to lose, he gains a wanted point for attempting the heist, he gains a wound, and he draws a poker card. Fights can also occur between players. In this case, it's Crazy Horse's turn, and he moves into Billy the Kid's space and declares he's going to fight. Now, when a player fights another player, they must declare the type of fight that they are attempting. They can attempt to duel, in which case it's a straight fight, high card wins, the winner of the fight gains 2 LP, or the, the active player would gain 2 LP. They can attempt to rob the player. In this case, if Crazy Horse was to attempt to rob Billy and successfully robbed him, was successful in the endeavor, he would gain a wanted point and steal half of Billy's money or gold nuggets rounded up, and it's up to uh, it is up to Crazy Horse what he would take, gold nuggets or money, but that is halved and then rounded up. They would also steal a cattle token if able. The third option for fighting another player is to attempt an arrest. In this case, Billy's wanted. Crazy Horse moves into his space to attempt an arrest. If Crazy Horse successfully arrests Billy, Crazy Horse would gain a marshal point. The targeted player, in this case Billy, would lose half of his money, half his gold nuggets rounded up, all of his cattle tokens, all of his wanted points, and would be returned to the sheriff's office. If, no matter which choice the active player makes, in this case Crazy Horse is the active player, no matter which of those three fight options he selects, whether he's arresting, he's dueling, or he's robbing a player, if he fails at any of those, he gains a wound and draws a poker card. During a player's turn, a player may take an action that results in them triggering an effect on one of the story cards. There are two decks of story cards, and there are four separate triggers of things that could end up triggering stories to happen throughout the course of the game. In this case, we see two of them. Gain any amount of martial or wanted points on your turn, and in your turn at a location outside of a town. Once you have triggered one of the, when you, once you've met one of those conditions, you'll simply place your colored cube on the back of the story card. So for example, Billy the Kid gained a wanted point. We would place his black cube there. You may only place one cube per, per turn. So even if he was to gain a martial point and end his location outside of town, he could not then place a cube on the next card. He would have to pick which card he wanted to place on. Calamity Jane takes her turn. She ends her turn in a location outside of town, so she places one of her white cubes. Whenever the prerequisite number of cubes is met on the card based on the number of players. So in a two to four player game, you would need two cubes on the back of this card. In a five to six player game, we'd need three cubes. As soon as the prerequisite number of cubes goes on that card, so let's say Calamity Jane achieves a martial point. She places her cube on here. At the end of the turn, the event card or the story card will trigger. The story card, in this case, the good book has some flavor text as well as an event. So in this case, the players that contributed to this gain a marshal or a wanted point. Wanted players can choose to gain a marshal point, which is something they normally can't do. You will also see that bandits will be spawned at bandit hideout A. 
and the player who triggered this event, in this case Calamity Jane, would move the, the sheriff up to three spaces in any direction she chooses. This card would then get discarded, and we now have a new trigger, gain two or more LP from a single action. At the end of the player's turn, once they have taken their three actions, they enter the end of turn phase. First, we resolve any story cards with the requisite number of cubes on them. That player will then discard down to their maximum hand size. By default, that is five cards in hand. Plus, they will also lose a card for every wound they have. If that player is wanted, they will gain LP based on which row of the wanted track they occupy. So in the board state we're looking at now, if it was Billy the Kid's turn, the end of his turn, he would gain one LP for being in the third space on the wanted track. Check for the end of game. And if the prerequisite number of legendary points or LP has not been reached by any player, then play simply passes to the player to the left. And that player begins with their start of turn, followed by their action phase, and their end of turn phase. Play will continue until one player hits the prerequisite number of points of, of LP that were determined at the beginning of the game. Once that is done, you will finish out the round, and then every player will take one more turn. So it won't necessarily be the player that triggers the end of the game that will be declared the most legendary character in the Wild West. Let's go through an example round of a game of Western Legends, starting with Billy the Kid, who begins his turn in Bandit Hideout A. Billy starts his turn by drawing either two poker cards, $20, or one poker card and $10. Billy didn't start the game with any money, so he's simply going to take $20 to begin the game. He takes $20, he places that on his player mat. He now has three actions he can take. Looking at his poker hand, as to what he has, he has the option of playing Living Legend and gaining a Marshal or Wanted Point, or he can play Payday and simply gain $30. In Billy's case, he's going to play Living Legend, which allows him to gain a Marshal or Wanted Point. He's going to climb up the Wanted track one more spot. Remember, he started with two Wanted Points, so he's already on the third spot of the track. The Living Legend card simply gets discarded. For his second action, Billy is going to move one space into the Macedo's Point Ranch, and for his third action, he's simply going to take one of the Macedo, Macedo's Point Ranch cattle and place that on his player board as well. Because he gained a Marshall Point, he can place one of his black cubes on the back of this story card. He also has ended his turn on a location outside of town. However, he doesn't have the option of placing a cube there because you can only place one cube on his turn. He's now at this end of turn phase. So he resolves story cards. None of the story cards have the requisite two cubes on them, so no story cards will resolve at the end of his turn. He discards down to his maximum hand size, which is five. He has one card, so he's okay there. If he's wanted, which he is, he will gain LP based on which row of the uh, wanted track he occupies. In this case, he's on the first row, so he will gain one LP. So we'll give Billy one LP at the end of the turn. We check for the end of game. No one has reached the prerequisite 20 points for this game, and so play simply passes to the player to his left. In this case, in the case of this example, Calamity Jane is to his left. Calamity Jane starts her turn by drawing either a poker card and $10, two poker cards, or she can take $20. In her case, she wants to draw two poker cards because she has some plans for how she wants to take her how she wants to start. She only started with one poker card, so she adds two to her hand. Now she has a hand of three. For her first action, Calamity Jane is simply going to move two spaces into Bandit Hideout C and this area where this bandit already occupies. Moving into that space immediately triggers a fight. So Calamity Jane gets to fight a bandit essentially for free without spending an additional action. The player to her right, in this case Billy the Kid, is going to draw two cards from the NPC fight deck, and Billy will take on the role of the bandit. So Billy gets to look at these two cards. We've got a seven and an eight. If we play the eight, the other player in the fight gains a wound. So he could use this card to give Calamity Jane a wound. If he plays the seven, 
the other player gains a wound or discards a random poker card. So he's got a choice to make, playing the 7 or the 8. Let's go ahead, let's play this 8. So we don't give Calamity Jane the option of discarding a poker card. We want to wound her. So Billy's going to play that card face down. Jane is going to take a look at her cards. And she's also going to play a card face down in the fight. Those cards are revealed simultaneously. High card wins. In this case, Jane has played a queen to the eight. So Jane would win this fight against the bandit. She also has a bonus that if this card is played in a fight against a bandit, a guard, or the sheriff, in this case she's playing it against a bandit, she may cancel the effect of the fight card that was played against her so she can cancel the gaining a wound, which she chooses to do. The card used in her fight gets discarded. The bandit comes off the board because he's now been defeated by Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane now has the option of gaining a martial point or an LP. She is simply going to take a martial point, moving into the first track of the martial, uh, first space of the martial track, and granting her twenty dollar reward for taking out that bandit. Also, gaining a martial point allows her to place one of her white cubes on the back of the gain martial or wanted points card. That was her first action. She now has two actions that she can take. She has a little bit of money left in her pocket here, so for her second action. She's simply going to take a regular move action and move two spaces into the general store. And then for her third action, she's going to go shopping. She's going to take the $40 that she had, the $20 that she started the game with, as well as the $20 that she just got from moving up one space in the Marshall track. She's going to spend that $40 and she is going to buy a rifle to add to her player mat. So now this rifle is... Uh, a lot more strong than her, than her standard revolver that she starts the game with. So now at the start of a fight, she will have the ability to look at two random cards in the targeted player's hand. That ends Jane's turn. She enters her end of turn phase. The first thing we do is we resolve any story cards with the prerequisite number of cubes on them. There are two cubes, which is the prerequisite number. So we activate this story card. And we have a story card here called the good book. In the good book, there's light and dark, good and evil. Everything that ever was can be boiled down into one or the other. In a world without laws, there'd be no one to break them. Players that contributed to this gain one martial point or one wanted point. Wanted players may choose to gain one martial point. So the players that contributed to this were Billy. He's going to take a wanted point, which allows him to draw a poker card because he hit the fourth space. So we'll give Billy a poker card here. And Calamity Jane, the white cube, white player here, will take a martial point, which will grant her $20 for hitting the second space of the martial track. So she'll take $20 and place that. We return to the story card. This says that we spawn bandits at Bandit Camp A. Bandit Camp A in Sunny Hills already has a bandit. However, the bandit camp up here where Billy started is now vacant, so we can now take one of our bandit miniatures and place it in Bandit Hideout A so that Bandit Hideout A has now been spawned. The player who triggered this event card can move the Sheriff up to three spaces. This is very bad for Billy, because Calamity Jane triggered this card and Billy is wanted. So, Calamity Jane can move the player, or move the Sheriff up to three spaces. She moves, moves him twice into Billy's space. Billy immediately has to discard a poker card from his hand. Now, Billy's in some trouble here because all Billy has is a 5 and a 6. So Billy's going to discard the 5. The player to Billy's right, because Billy is to the right of, of Calamity Jane, but in the case of the Sheriff, it's the player to the right of the wanted player. So in this case, to the right of Billy is Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse is going to draw four cards from the NPC fight deck. And he's going to use these cards, much like we did with the Bandits, to attempt to arrest Billy the Kid and knock Billy off of that wanted track. Billy only has one card in hand due to the discard that he had to play. Pull this off the board. And Billy also knows that the eight from the fight deck has been played because there was a bandit fight. Billy knows the eight's been played. He doesn't know what the other card is that's been discarded, but he knows the eight is gone. So he's that, can, that type of information can help him with his choice. Now, granted, he doesn't have a choice. He's only got one poker card. 
So we are going to... Crazy Horse is going to play this card. We'll discard the rest of the cards down here. And we simultaneously reveal the cards. Billy played Stick 'em Up after cards are revealed. Um, well, he played Stick 'em Up. So that's a card that gets played in addition to. So he doesn't get any kind of bonuses. Billy has no bonuses from his weapons. Crazy Horse chose to play a queen for the sheriff. The queen, uh, the other player in this fight, draws a poker card. So Billy's going to get a poker card out of losing this fight. Since Billy lost the fight, Billy has now been arrested by the sheriff. What happens in that case is Billy loses half of his money. He has $20, so he's going to lose $10. If he had any gold nuggets, he would lose half of those, go those, those gold nuggets. He will lose the cattle token that he picked up at the Macedo's Point Ranch. That simply gets discarded back to the ranch. Players don't know what the reward is on the back of that cattle token because you don't look at it until you take it to its destination. He also loses all of his wanted points. So he comes off of the wanted track completely, meaning that unless he gains wanted points at the start of his next turn, he's not going to gain LP at the end of his turn. Billy and the sheriff are then returned to the sheriff's office. And all of that happened from resolving a story card at the end of Calamity Jane's turn. Calamity Jane must then discard down to her hand size. She has a maximum hand size of five. She only has two cards, so she's good there. If she's a wanted player, she's on the martial track, so she's not going to gain any LP at the end of her turn. We check for the end of game. No one has hit 20 points, so play passes to the left and Doc Holiday. Doc Holiday started the game with two poker cards and $40, so he's had a little bit of an impasse as to what he wants to do. But he's simply going to take $10 and a single poker card, and add those to his hand and to his player mat. Alright, Doc Holliday starts his turn in the Red Falls doctor's office up there, which is good for Doc. He starts the game wounded, meaning that his hand size is reduced by one. Wounds also decrease, uh, decrease your LP at the end of the game. Every wound you have at the end of the game is worth minus one LP. So it makes sense to heal those up. At this point, though, Doc's okay having a wound, and he is simply going to use two of his actions. Let's discard these cards off the board. First of all, he's going to go ahead and play Payday, which gives him $30. So he's going to grab some extra cash. For his second action, he is going to move from the doctor's office. He's going to move two spaces down to the general store. And for his third action, he is going to spend $50 to purchase a Mustang. The Mustang will allow him to move four spaces by default, so he no longer has is limited to two spaces of movement. He can now move four spaces. That mount gets added to his player board, and $50 comes off. So he pays his $50, and that has been taken care of. He is at the end of turn phase, having taken his three actions. So we check for story cards. There are no story cards because he is in a town, and he did not gain any LP on this turn, so he didn't place any cubes. No prerequisites have been met. He discards down to his maximum hand size. His maximum hand size is five minus the one wound he has, so his hand size is four. He only has two cards. He's good there. We check for, uh, is he a wanted player? He is not. He's not on the wanted track. No one is on the wanted track right now, so he will not gain any LP at the end of his turn. We check for end of game. No one has hit 20 points, so play passes to the left and passes to Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse starts the game with three poker cards and an upgraded revolver. The upgraded revolver lets him decrease the value of a card played against him in a fight by one. It's also worth one LP at the end of the game. Crazy Horse, however, did not start with any money. So to start his turn, he is simply going to take $20 and add that to his player mat. Crazy Horse starts the game at the Cliff Junction Mine down here near the bottom of the board. For his first action, he is going to take the prospecting dice and he's going to roll them. In this case, 
he rolled a gold nugget on each die. So he's simply going to take two gold nuggets from the supply and place them on his player board. Remember, he can only hold four gold nuggets at any given time. That's his first action. For his second action, he's going to take a look at the cards in his hand and see what could be done here. He is going to play Determination, which is going to give him two actions. For those two actions, he's going to move one, two, one, two, and he has one action left. For his third, for, for his final action, He's going to simply deposit the two gold nuggets that he mined into the bank, returning them to the supply. For each gold nugget that he deposits in the bank, he gains $20. So in this case, he'll gain $40 added to his cash supply. And he will also gain two LP. So we move yellow up two on the LP track. One of the story triggers is to gain two or more LP from a single action. He just did that, so he gets to place his yellow cube on the back of the card. Having completed all of his actions on his turn, he now moves into his end of turn phase. So we resolve story cards with the requisite number of cubes. In this case, there are none. There's only one cube on the one card, not enough to trigger it. Crazy Horse discards down to his maximum hand size. Five cards, he has two in hand, so he is good there. He is not a wanted player. Again, no one is on the wanted track, so he will not gain any additional LP at the end of his turn. We check for end of game. No one has reached 20 points. So play passes to the left, in this case back to Billy the Kid, and we're back to start a new round. Play will continue in that fashion with players start, starting their turn by taking a combination of cash and poker cards. They will take three actions, and they will check end of game, triggering story cards, gaining LP if they are on the wanted track, and checking for the prerequisite number of LP being earned. Gameplay will continue until someone has reached the prerequisite number of points. The round will get finished, and then every player will have one more turn. The player with the most LP at the end of that last round is declared the most legendary character in the Wild West. For an alternate way to play Western Legends, you can play with character goals. So we've got Billy the Kid here, who has collected his starting items, his two wanted points, which are indicated on the board off camera, his revolver, and his two poker cards that he starts the game with. He then will take his four goal cards, and every character has these goal cards, has four of them. He'll shuffle these up, randomly remove one, and return it to the box, and that leaves him with three goals to try to obtain throughout the course of the game. So for example, he can discard a poker card after rustling or wrangling cattle to allow him to complete this goal. Another goal is to discard a poker card after winning a game of poker in the Dark Rock Saloon, allowing him to complete this goal. And the third goal here that he has selected is to discard one poker card after winning a fight in a town to complete this goal. Every time one of those goals is completed, and I'll pull these down here. Every time one of these goals is completed throughout the course of the game, it doesn't cost an extra action to do so. Billy can reveal the goal that he has completed, declaring what the requirement was and that he had just completed the goal. And then he will draw a number of legend tokens from the bag or from the draw pile equal to the number of goals that he has completed. So if it's his first goal, He'll simply draw one legend token out of the bag. This is secret in-game scoring that will get added to his total of LP at the end of the game. There are 18 legend tokens in the bag, enough for each player to have three of them because you'll only complete your goal one time. They are distributed. There are nine 2LP tokens. There are six 1LP tokens. And then three tokens are worth three LP at the end of the game. Every time you complete a goal, you will draw a number of tokens from the token pile equal to the number of goals that you have completed. So if Billy, this is Billy's first goal completed, he drew, he draws a 2LP. Now obviously these would be stored face down, but for demonstration purposes, I'm keeping them face up. He completes his second goal. He would then draw two legendary tokens out of the pile. And because he has two goals completed, he gets to keep any two of the tokens that he's drawn from the bag. So he would return this one LP. 
After completing the third goal, he would draw three tokens out of the bag or out of the pile and he would get to keep any three LP tokens. So maybe these are the ones that he drew and he simply wants to keep the three LP tile and add it to the two twos that he had previously. With all three goals completed, he can then continue about the game as normal, doing wanted points, martial points, gaining LP. At the end of the game, he will earn points equal to the LP that he gained on the legendary token. So in this case, he would gain seven additional LP at the end of the game to add to his total. That just adds some hidden scoring, again ensuring that the person who triggers the game is not necessarily the person who will win Western Legends.